pleased to have here on the Rich Eisen Show, Patrick Corbin. How are you, sir? Yeah, great, guys. How are you? I'm doing great. How's life? Uh, it's pretty awesome. It's good to hear uh, hear that world champion. So um, still getting used to it, but uh, it's been it's been an exciting week for us. Is it true you didn't start playing organized ball? I mean, seriously, until middle of high school, Patrick? Is that a fact? Yeah, I played. I played uh, kind of for our basketball team in eleventh grade, and some of the guys on the team played baseball. And um, I played little league here and there, uh, other positions. I was a left-handed catcher, left-handed shortstop, things like that. And um, but some of the the basketball guys were like, "Hey, why don't you just try out?" And and I did, and set on a pitch, and never hit in high school, just pitched, and um, that was it. Okay, so my eight-year-old who does use his left hand to throw a baseball. Um, you're saying I've got a chance. I've got a shot here, Patrick. Is that what you're saying right now? It, def- it definitely helps when you're left-handed. Dust. <laughs> I can tell you when he picked up a ball as a uh, you know as a three-year-old and started throwing it with his left hand. I thought to myself, "There's 40 years of viability left in that arm." That's exactly what I thought. <laughs> yeah. No, it's definitely good. My, my dad was a lefty, so he showed me uh, my slider grip when when I was a kid and. Um, same grip that I use today, so that's something I always remember. So, when did you begin to sense, Patrick, that something special could happen on this team? Um, we had a little stretch there where, at the beginning of the season, where things weren't going our way. We, we weren't playing good baseball. We had we had a lot of injuries. I mean, the whole top of our lineup was hurt, and uh, I, I knew from spring training we played well. We had players that that were good enough to win. We had we had a lot of veterans in that clubhouse, some young players that were good that. Something's got to turn around. We're just too good, and um, like we signed a couple guys and started playing better and and, and got healthy. And um, we we said from that moment, if we can just get into the playoffs, we could be very dangerous. So there wasn't really one moment or one stretch in a season where you started looking around and saying, "Okay, we're we have a, we're arriving right now." Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think after that that start where we were nineteen and thirty one, uh, we we played the best baseball in the MLB. So. Um, there was a stretch in there where, where we felt things were changing. Um, we knew our goal was to, to get a couple games over 500 around the all-star break, and uh, we, we felt the momentum after that, and time just rolled with it. Patrick, I gave you two chances for you to say the words baby shark, and you didn't. I gave uh, you two uh, shots right there. <laughs> with Parr, I mean, I, I played with Parr in Arizona. I mean, he was obviously a huge uh, piece for us to loosen things up, bring some, some energy in the dugout, and um, he was he was for sure a, a huge piece for us. Um, he came in when we did have injuries. He stepped right in, played played center field for us, um, hit really well, and um, just brought the energy. <laughs> what was the reaction though? The first time, did everyone know that he was going to have Baby Shark played as his walk up song <laughs> when he switched to that? Was that aware? Was that already your your clubhouse already aware of that? Um, no, we had no idea until the first time it went on. I think one of his kids. We we'll loved the song, and I mean, every kid does, I guess. Sure. But they were just like, let's roll with it. So they started playing it, and then you just see the reaction of the fans, and um, they're all doing it, and then it just kind of built up after that. And I think people were just coming in games to see them pinch hit late. <laughs> I know. I, I, I know, but there was no sense in the in the dugout, like as he came back in after that at bat saying, what the hell was that? <laughs> Nothing? We were laughing probably for sure. I okay. mean, it, it definitely caught on really quick, though. At, even after the first one, it was like, what was this? And fans got into it right away. And then it was pretty neat in the postseason when, when you saw a packed stadium, everyone doing it. Nationals pitcher, Game 7 winner Patrick Corbin here on the Rich Eisen Show. Okay, so you're out there in the pen, Game 7. When did you get a sense you might be in this uh, in that baseball game? Yeah, well, we – um, we knew Max um, was coming off that neck and, and back injury, and, and we weren't really sure what what he was going to be able to do. So I just tried to stay loose loose the whole time, and I thought whenever he was done, maybe I'd have a chance to come in. And he got through five innings, got in some trouble, and pitched out of it, and kept us in the game. And um, they called down and, and told me I was in, and I had no idea if it was going to be one batter, a couple, or end up going three innings. So you're you you'd stroll in. Here it is in the middle of uh, after bottom five. You stroll in and you're you're taking the mound, top six down two nothing in Houston. People going crazy. This they're they're sensing the moment. What are you thinking? Um, 
<laughs> I guess it's a big moment, but I, I, I try not thinking about that. You just try to go out there, try to be prepared, focus on your job, and I think I'll look back and see how, how cool that was to, to pitch in a game seven. But I honestly felt pretty good. I mean, the whole that whole month we were in big situations like that, um, played in some big stadiums where, where fans were loud and getting, going nuts. So um, we just felt like if, if we could just if I could just throw up zeros there, um, keep us in the game. Our offense has been doing it all year, putting up runs late. Right, and then you stroll out there, bottom seven. Now, now, now you got a lead. I mean, talk about a, a, a switch. You're down. Your, your team's down to the last eight outs, and now suddenly it's up to you to start making sure that the Astros' last nine outs go quickly. Um, walk me through that mindset as as Kendrick put one off the foul pole. Yeah, just uh, I mean, Howie and just can't be happy better for him. Just, just such a such a nice person. Great guy. Uh, he's he's been doing it all season for us, and like I said, I think if if I put up a zero there in in, in the sixth. Uh, gives their offense another chance or, or we're close if one guy gets on a homer can tie it so uh, I mean our offense is too good to set down Grinky was unbelievable he, he gave up a homer to Rendon and then walked the guy and they, they got him out of there but um, that, that's kind of what we've been doing all season Patrick Corbin Nationals pitcher here on the Rich Eisen show Who, what's with the shirts off celebration where did the, where did this one come from Patrick what's, up, what's with the shirts um, off I think those are just that was, excuse me. That was always his thing. He would just, just sometimes thing. take it off when we were celebrating in the clubhouse, okay. and then it, it started happening. And then it, <laughs> it started happening. That's one way to put it. And then he so did it. The bony thing you guys are saying. Yeah. Well, I mean, I noticed he did it uh, after the parade. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. at the podium. Uh, and uh-huh. then he said that his wife was going to kill him. <laughs> yeah. He hasn't been too happy with that. But. Yeah, and then and then the sweaters, if you will, come off uh, on the ice, on the Zamboni, uh, with the caps. Um, were you one of those guys on the Zamboni? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so there were six of us on there. I was one. Mm-hmm. And we were, we were told strictly to keep our seatbelts seat on that thing, even though it's moving really slow. Mm-hmm. And they said we couldn't stand up, so... We obviously had some drinks uh, earlier. You can see that from some videos. And we had the trophy with us, and we were just yeah. like, what the heck? Like, I guess they're going to kick us off. Hey, you win the World Series, um, and the thing's going, what, like eight miles an hour. I think, you know, you got the trophy with you. It, it, it's one of those where you ask for forgiveness, I think, rather than permission, Patrick, don't you think? Yeah, I think the the head guy there. We we took a photo with him after and, and made things up, but yeah, uh, fans, it fans were loving it. Um, the all the high, the hockey players were into our scene all year, and uh, we've been into theirs. Who's the dude from the Nationals who uh, took his shirt off and then Ovechkin jumped on his back? Who's that fellow? <laughs> oh, Ali. He's our uh, he's our uh, BP thrower. So um, it's kind of a little celebration that we do and. Um, that was pretty cool to see him can do that. You know, no offense to Ollie, but he took his shirt off and he still had a sweater on, I think, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you know? could say that. Yeah, okay, we just want to make sure that that's, uh, uh, that don't adjust your sets. It's cold in the hockey ring. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Still have that, have to have that layered effect. Um, yeah. So you're from, you're from the upstate New York area? Is that where you're from? Uh, yeah, Syracuse, New York. Okay. From Syracuse, New York. So, does this mean you're a Bills fan? Or what What's your football allegiance, Patrick? Uh, lately, I've been a, uh, just my fantasy team, but okay. uh, I, I grew up a Jaguars fan. Oh, okay, um, I got to follow up on that. How do you grow up a Jaguars <laughs> fan sitting there in Syracuse, New York? Is that a, is that a Coughlin thing, maybe? Um, well, kind of. I did like him, but I I got I started getting into the NFL when they came out in '95. And okay, just kind of stuck with them and. Um, I got a couple of brothers and, and a sister. We all have different teams, and it was kind of a similar thing like that. Okay. And in terms of growing up uh, a baseball fan, is it true you, Patrick Corbin, were a Yankee fan? Is that a true story? Yeah, for sure. Every every kid that I grew up with and uh, my parents, everybody grew up Yankee fans. Okay. Uh, are you aware that most Yankee fans wanted you to sign with the Yankees? In the uh, last year, are you aware that most Yankee fans thought that you were going to sign with the Yankees last year? I know that's two separate questions, but you may answer mm-hmm. both. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I did say a couple of things. I grew up a fan, and, and people kind of blew that up, but um, kind of had the opportunity this last season. There were multiple teams and good situations wanted me, and 
um, it, it would have been cool to, to say that I was a Yankee, but I, I think I made the right move by, by coming to Washington. No, and, no, and no. But we did. Patrick, I'm not saying that you made a wrong maneuver at all. I mean, just and understand, I'm from Staten Island, New York. Uh, R- Reggie Jackson and, and that 70s team caused me to fall in love with baseball. Don Mattingly is my favorite player of all time. So this does come from a very personal point of view. Um, did they not come up with the scratch? Is that what happened? Or what? what's the scoop? Um, there, they were like dialogue between, um, other teams and they were kind of a little bit off. And, um, like I said, we, we, we wanted to, to go somewhere where, um, we felt, felt comfortable in a team that was going to win. And obviously New York would have done that. And, and Washington was another place. And, um, they, they were a little off from, from some of those teams and, mm-hmm. um, I mean, that's kind of what it is. That's kind of what it is. And now you're shirtless on a Zamboni lifting a trophy. I understand. That's the way life works sometimes, huh? <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, this this team was incredible. I mean, I'm sure you guys watched, um, I mean, at least that postseason run that we had and uh, just a, a real special Patrick, group. I got to tell you, man, it was, it, you know, I, I do believe there are baseball gods. I do believe it. And that sometimes the baseball gods put a little bit of a thumb on the scale. And the way that you performed for much of the season after you mentioned that 19 and 31 start, the way that um, that you won the wild card game against Milwaukee, the way that you wound up boat racing your way essentially into the World Series uh, and 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 everything else caused me to believe that there was something going on there with your team. Yes. Yeah, for sure. I mean, one thing doesn't go our way. I mean, we could have gone out of that wild card game. That ball goes right to him. It, it kicks left and gets by him. So, uh, just a crazy run. That's right. And if the Steinbrenners had only kicked over a rock and done what they should have done with you, you never know. But that's just me. <laughs> Easy, buddy. I'm sorry. Easy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, Patrick, congratulations to you. Uh, I hope this is the first of many times that we get to chat on this show and beyond. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I appreciate it. Right back at you. That's Patrick Corbin. For more of The Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download The Rich Eisen Show app.